desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you do take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Loving God, Lord of all creation, you call us out of isolation to gather once again as the body of Christ. We do so in cautious awareness of the ongoing vulnerability to sickness and distress. As a community dedicated to the belovedness of all persons, we don masks out of concern for others and then maintain a necessary but wistful distance when we would rather laugh and sing and hug. Grant us courage and resilience to continue to be your church in all circumstances in spite of temporary limitations. May we be a living presence of love and joy and unity in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. A reading from Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress, Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 65. Let us pray our psalm in unison. You visit the earth and water and water abundantly. abundantly. You, you make it very plenteous. plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your past overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys clothe themselves with grain. 
Let them shout for joy and sing. Our second lesson is Broken, Unbroken by Mary Oliver. The lonely stand in the dark corners of their hearts. I have seen them in cities and in my own neighborhood. Nor could I touch them with the magic that they crave to be unbroken. Then I myself lonely. Said hello to good fortune. Someone came along and lingered and little by little became everything that makes the difference. Oh, I wish such good luck to everyone. How beautiful it is to be unbroken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. For as what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and receives it with immediate joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was grown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity, who was and is and is to come. Amen. For those of you who will be watching this worship on your computer screens, this is the first weekend, the first Sunday, in which we will be coming together to worship in person out on the lawn out here, weather permitting. 
So we're kind of in two places. But then again, hasn't everything about 2020 been about the weirdest, craziest, most unsettling year we've ever had? Someone likened it to a year written by Stephen King and directed by Quentin Tarantino. And we're only halfway through it. It began with the Southern Hemisphere in flames, and it hasn't gotten much better. Who were we when it all started? And who are we now? Mary Oliver's poem names our craving to be unbroken in this year that has scattered us like pieces of a puzzle dropped on the floor. This virus broke our normal ties, and we are hungry to have the pieces put back together. But it seems as though the picture might have changed a bit. The prophet Isaiah promised that God's word will nourish us and cause us to bloom, going out in joy and led back in peace. Has this time of isolation actually been a fertile season for us to learn and grow? I suppose that depends who you ask. We've certainly had lots of opportunities to try some new things, to reclaim some old ways of being. Jesus talked about being good soil so that God seeds the word, the vision, could take root and grow. Has what we have seen and learned made us better soil for God's work of growing a world of peace? At first, everything was uncertain. There was fear, and then came the boredom. And then suddenly, we began seeing other things really hard images and voices that have called out to us for hundreds of years in distress, renewing their litany, asking us to finally hear and believe them and to care. In the midst of a pandemic, our nation's streets erupted in anger and anguish. A seven minute or so video made us sure, made it sure that we all saw what we have been asked to see for a long time. Being black in America is hard at best and too often dangerous. For many of us, this has proved to be an overdue wake up call. The books that have climbed to the top of bestsellers lists are witnesses to this awakening. Books about racism, anti-racism, and the responsibilities of being white are flying off shelves and showing up in our Kindles. Professional athletes are stepping forward and claiming their right to use their celebrity for social change. The thing that is different this time is that lots more people are listening. I had a lovely vacation a week ago. Of course, it was a staycation. I didn't want to fritter away the time, so I created two projects for myself. I called them boot camps. One was watercolor boot camp, working to get past a really frustratingly stuck place. I needed to learn more about how the water and the paint and the paper all work together. The other boot camp was a commitment to some of the anti-racism literature. I finished three books, I'm on my fourth, and worked hard to allow what was in them to break through all of my resistance and my comfort barriers. The watercolor was fun, the reading was important. It has been humbling 
to get a view of how my privileged ignorance has probably appeared to black folks who have experienced my uncritical and unintended whiteness exert itself. You know that idea that if you have a brush with death, your whole life flashes before your eyes? Well, I have had a slideshow of my least enlightened moments flashing before my eyes regularly. I just grapple with one, catch my breath, and suddenly another memory will appear. And I'm left looking like an Edvard Munch painting. The only thing that I can do is to learn from these moments and commit to doing better. Brene Brown tells herself regularly, I'm here to try and to get it to try to get it right, not to be right. I'm trying to adopt that mantra. This work feels very important to me. I'm learning so much from uh, as I prepare a talk for the Brantford Rotary Club on how racism lives in our institutions and traditional ways of seeing ourselves. I remember um, when I was living in Indianapolis and learned about an award given each year to someone who had done good work fighting racism. At that time, I didn't have a very deep understanding of the reality and the scope of racism. But I remembered that it seemed strange to me that it was always a black person being given the award. That seemed to me like making the kid who got beat up every day by a bully the one responsible for stopping the bullying. Weren't there any white people fighting racism in the 80s and 90s in Indianapolis? Apparently not, at least not enough that anyone could see it. So who are we now? that we'd been through six months of singed baby kangaroos and koalas, a killer virus, murder hornets, a never-ending construction project, and an eruption of racial angst like Mount Vesuvius. Maybe we don't know yet because this all takes a lot of processing. I do know that as I prepare to see folks in person for worship, that it confirms for me how deeply we crave one another's company, how important worshiping together is. I am proud of the church that we have continued to be in the last four months. The Branford community knows that we are still here helping in any way that we can, offering spiritual comfort, giving a voice to collective grief and pain with toothpaste and paper towels and detergent for people who might have a hard time affording them. We have been who we are because we know that we are the body of Christ. We have reminded ourselves of the deep need that we all have to know that we are loved and our mission to do whatever we can, wherever we can. I have spoken a couple of times of that beautiful Japanese art of mending broken pottery with gold. It's called Kintsuji, do you remember? I've decided that, that that's how I'm going to think of this year. How beautiful it is to be unbroken, to be mended with the gold of adversity, understanding, and growth. I'm not sure what that looks like yet, but it certainly feels hopeful. Be unbroken. Be beautiful.
Let us stand and confess our faith using the words of the ancient church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Um, On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you guys to have a seat. Let us take a moment, take a breath, and enter into prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are gathered in your name. We are the body of Christ, your hands and feet and heart on earth. Inspire us with your vision of peace and give us strength and courage to do the work you have given us to do. wisdom to leaders of the world, that together we may overcome these challenges and know ourselves as one family of God. many blessings of this life, for a storm that left us unscathed, and for the rain that it brought. For the work of our construction crew, 
for doctors and nurses and researchers seeking a cure and for the wonders of this beautiful planet. May we be good stewards of all these things. God of mercy and compassion, we lift up before you this day all who suffer in body or mind or spirit, that they may be strengthened by your love and filled with your healing grace. those who have died, especially Ginny Usher and Joan Kalbaugh, that they may find welcome in your kingdom and a place at your table. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace to you, Lord. We have a uh, wonderful special presentation that we want you all to know about and be able to see. Each year, the Vestry Award Scholarships to worthy students in our parish, in part to further the legacy of Matthew Bill Shepherd, a longtime Brantford educator and the Goodrich family. We are very proud of our Trinity students, younger and older, and wish them great success in their educational pursuits. We are very happy to present a scholarship to Andrew Casenza. 
He is enrolled in the Master of Science in Nursing, Adult Gerontology Nurse Practitioner Program with a seamless continuation into the Doctor of Nursing practice. He will start, be starting his program the fall of 2020. We wish you well in your upcoming year. I can say that we are so proud to have been with you on this entire journey through your nursing career, and we just love seeing where you're going with it, so you bless us. Yes. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lead on to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Dearest Lord Jesus, we desire, we believe that you are truly present in this holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you within our souls and lives. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves to you, together with your faithful people gathered as we are able. Let us never be separated from you. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May God's blessing be with you. May Christ's peace be within you. May the Spirit's love and inspiration fill you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.